What's going on everybody? It's your boy SB is the trackster and welcome back to another dance hall video tutorial. Complete mix guide, I mean I work on a rhythm. Name Prime Yep. It's a dark rhythm. It have a lot, a lot, a lot of things are going in it. Now I mean I'm gonna mix it in a studio one though. I'm just in a FL studio right now because I'm gonna bounce down the project. I'm gonna just wanna show how me prep everything and get it ready for go over to studio one. So that's some I do for the first little part of the video. I'm gonna speed it up, but pretty much what I'm gonna do is Make sure say, all of the individual elements them want to mix them link to an individual mixer track. As you can see, may I use about 35 to 40 different tracks. I have some of the tracks them in between or space out and now use, you know what I mean? So we have a lot of effects. I must say everything individual. So like this part I see the AK is just simple. We have three different trigger for the for the gunshot. So I'ma put them each on them own channel. So you have this one right as so well. 41, then you have the second one, we have 42, and and so on and so on. And I mean so that's exactly what I mean. So I have everything separate, pretty much. I'm gonna give you a quick preview of everything individual. Like the intro for the track itself is like a um like a movie scene, you know and I mean so this are the intro for the track. I mean, so that's the intro. Um, from where you can hear, if I take out the acapella, take off all of the instruments and like the Halloween sounds and all that, you can hear me kind of have like a build up, you know what I mean? So it start out where it's just like um, somebody walk in a room. Door open up. Dog start bark. The door close. Then, I mean, once the truck drop, you have the take out all of the instrument parts. Where the fuck is this string to play, man? Bumba cloth. Okay. Can I mean so we have the two brother them attack and if you don't know where the acapella they come from is from the infamous two brother from G City and um what they matter about whatever the fuck they matter about you know what I mean I have no idea about I like it and it kind of fit on my direct so I'm sample it and drop it in there you know what I mean so like me say I'll speed up the rest of the thing kind of gonna a quick breakdown um so for the next probably like minute or so everything though kind of fast, you know what I mean? So, let's go. I'll prep everything like myself, so. See you in a second.
All right, so yeah, we over in a studio want to know. Um, I'm a tempo and everything set. Key, B minor, tempo, 97, 4, 4, as far as the timing goes. So all I left is enough is just dragging the stems. So we'll do that now. Yes, yeah, so all matter I know is kind of just a drag it all the way back to the start. Once we drop it, everything come in and looking colorful and all of that. If we press play. Hold on. Now, I mean, out of this world, loud. The reason is because in here somewhere is a master truck. Um... I'm gonna turn up the display, you see it. So see it right, so the master, so it's low like that. I mean, so first thing we'll do is we'll change the color to this track. Make it something bright or stand out. Then we'll rename it. We'll put reference. Reason being, this track is what would have compare the finished product to when we're done so it's like a reference you know what i mean so as far as the volume we can turn that down we can actually hide the track for right now we don't really need it you know what i mean and i'm gonna use it until the end of the mixing so aside from that now we can go back into the console let's make everything smaller for right now and go highlight everything except my vocals so highlight everything and we don't set a level minus 10 because right now we just go through and I start out and the group the different elements so I put all of the synths in a one category all of the drums one place everything else another place and stuff like that you know and I mean so we don't go through and do that you know so I can make this back big um, let's press F3 get rid of that so yeah, so that's what we're doing right now for that. So I'll just go through start it out really, really quick and then we explain what we do. Once we're done, we'll fast forward it because it might take a little bit, you know what I mean? So oh, fast forward it and then explain it when we're done.
So yeah, I'm putting some mark and some stuff so we can easily move around and navigate the track. It's beat. All right, so I'm gonna write this as a very start right there, so. I'm gonna go eight bar up. All right, that's so the chorus start. Put in chorus. And really, you can just move around the mark of them himself so you can just copy. Then the chorus will come back in at about one, two, right there. So cool. And then right there. So I just put outro. Yeah. Then if we come over here. So go right click on one, create a range of section. Alright, so what that allow me for to know is if I want to take the verse, you know what I mean? And let's say I want to cut it. Like, is a way where I can um, take like the whole section and drag it somewhere else, you know what I mean? So, just like that, because I have the arranged section. So, like, if I want to rearrange the track, or put the chorus at the front. You know what I mean? We can do stuff like that. But we're not going to do that right now. We're just our mix and all of that. So let's get into the mixer. Um, let's start creating some boss, like I did explain earlier, for all of them individual sections. So for the first section, we have the, what we call the movement and the atmospheres and all of that. So or the movie atmosphere. So what I'm going to do is just highlight everything. Boom. Right click. Then create a boss for the selected channels. So what that do is the track with the play and everything I play. But me now, me can just mute the whole entire section. So if me go so, get rid of all of the, the walking, the footsteps and all of them things they out of the track. That way me can, if me a mix now, I'm more I say, okay, I'm more I hear the track without certain elements, me can do that. So let's remove this and go movie A. Boom, change the color to, hmm, I'm going to have them last time. Not sure, but we run with yellow for right now. Or actually, we'll grow lime green, right? Because typically green are for my vocals, but I'm going to have no green in it, so we just use that for all of the bus channel. Them. So these are the drums and all of that, so we can do the same thing, right? Click add a bus for the selected channels. Change the color to lime green. Rename it, call it drums. So if we go verse, I'm going to hear the track without the drums. It's bees, the track just mute it. You know what I mean? Just mute it and all of the drums turn off, even though they might play. And um, another reason why I do that is later on in the track, you know, see how important that can be. You know what I mean? So let's do the sneers right now. Change the color, lime green, and so on and so on. So we have snares done, we have the bass right there. So this I'm a producer tag, we don't really need to mute that, honestly. So let's do the bass. Uh, 
I'm gonna go through the rest of them and then just change all of the color all at once instead of keep on a go back and a go back. So it's bees, the it's bees. Alright, so these two are some apps, so same thing, add bus. Double click, put ARPS. And with them there. So on to the effects now. So add a bus. Double click and then put effects. And we can move into what this right as so orchestra. So I right click add a bus orchestra. Then we have the synths. I always have my synths them purple, so I'm gonna know immediately. So I'm gonna synth them. Um, so now we have all our bus created. Just highlight everything, click right there. So change the color to lime green. Boom, done. So if the track I play, if more I mute a certain section, notice how nothing I play. Put on back the bass. I mean, so oh, I have everything selected, so I mute everything. Let me say, just give me a lot of control, like I can hear any specific section of one here and mute another. So Let's start out working upon the, the intro with the movie elements of the track. So let's loop that player. All right, so the strings were play, right? If you can turn off everything else. All right, so pretty much we only have a few elements I play. We have the, the bell from Omnisphere, the brass from Nexus, and then everything else is pretty much just atmosphere and sound effects. But the atmosphere, it play all throughout the track, and I mean, these, um, I don't know which part I have them specifically, but them play all throughout the track. So, let me find them. Um, sound effects, I know some of them. Oh, no, no, so. Oh. What about Buck Lot the thing them there? Oh, so them are Halloween right or so and right or so. Yeah, so them would have said a focal point, right? So I start with them there. So I lower the footsteps, so let's get the atmosphere right first. So let's increase the volume upon them there and put in an EQ so we can start shape the sound. So Pro EQ. Click on it, get visible. All right, so you can see this sound is um not a lot of bass wise. We can roll off that anyway, or just get a high frequency shelf like a little boost. Come in and take out a little bit of this middle, but we we'll get like a nice like a high shelf boost so. Cool. I want it more atmospheric. So easy way to do that is just add a bus, no add a effect um effects channel. It's not specific to that track, it's just an effects channel. And we do make that yellow hollows on my effects channel them yellow. And I'll put a reverb on it. The I'm not sure which reverb probably use. Uh, so for this we go with the Verb Suites Classic from Slate Digital, just because. Might change it later on, but I'm not sure yet. So I want the Lexicon 224 XL, and I want a plate reverb, 
actually, I'm going to use a hall. So I'll go hot, um, dark hall. Or increase the width a little bit. Turn down, or turn down the lows a little bit. Turn down the highs. Because I want a darker sound and boost the mids a little bit. Try and get a darker sound at it. So let's go back to the atmosphere now. Let's go ascend. Click this. And then put effects one, which would have changed to dark hall verb. I will just put dark verb because it kind of cut off the name I'm going to see what I'm going. So I'll just put dark verb. So this is without the effects on it. Just listen to when we turn it up. And I mean, just get um, a nice body um, to the song. Now I'll use it that drastic. Then we have another one, another sound. So I can unmute this. Right. So can I get this the same treatment with the EQ? Or do I look a bit uh, more drastic thing to it? Because this kind of have some bass to it. So we get a higher boost, high-wise. But I take out some more of the body. And we can send it to the reverb to see him way. And then the good thing about this is we don't have to add a reverb on every channel. We can just use a send channel and get the signal processed the same way. All right, so we'll put one a little bit more left and one a little bit more right. So I'll go L13 and I'll go right 18. Alright, so now what I really bring out these two atmosphere is this dark string pattern I play all throughout the track from Nexus. So if I unmute this. Now I mean it really bring out the darkness in other tracks. So now we will go. Copy across the EQ for this. We will reset everything though back to default because one kind of get this its own type of effect. So first we will create a shelf. We will switch the Q twenty four dB per octave. So just want to get a bit more brightness in the sound. Down on the low cut now, we go see drastic low cut. Now I'm going to take out too much of the bass because that is really the identity of the sound. Right? I have a lot of bass in it and that's good. So now what we can do is because I took out some of the bass like that. I can just raise the volume. Nice. Cool. Cool. So now back to the start. We have the, the footsteps. Alright, so this one right says the one when I start walk up the steps. This one is the one when I'm just walking. So, so I'll just put walking. And I'll put walk up so I can identify them. 
So what I'm gonna do with this, right? Is I want a little bit more, looking more snap and looking more body. But I'll copy across the EQ or reset it, of course, and the put a nice like a spin upon the the steps. Also, I'll add some reverb to it. Kind of get a weird look at echo, which I kind of like. So let's turn on the volume a little bit. You know, want it too dominant. All right, and let's go back to the EQ now and add some body. And then do a high cut, I'll switch this to 48 dB per active. I want the footsteps to look a bit darker, you know what I mean? Without the EQ, if you listen to it, it's sound bright. I don't really like that. Now we can turn up the verb. Cool. So now I'm start to walk up the steps. So I'll copy across the verb, come across with the EQ again. So let's bring up the volume a little bit more. All right. Then you have the doors now and start open up. So you have the first door right here. Can come forward a little bit. All right, about right here. Add some verb to it. Yeah, because remember, we are trying to try create an atmosphere, you know what I mean? So, a lot of reverb in it is a dark atmosphere, and anything dark, you can associate it with reverb. And you have the dogs start box. So I'll change the name on this door open. No. I mean, and that's pretty much it for the first four bar at um, the intro. Then they have another four bar before the chorus drop. Oh, uh, the last thing for mix are the dog them. So let's um, let's do the dogs. I'll get the dog them. I like a bit more bass in that device. So let's bring across the EQ. Thank <laughs> you. 
so that's it for the first part of the intro. Then I have the second part where the track kind of start build up, you know, and the different elements and all them things that start coming. So let's start work through them there. All right, so let's open up back some of them four layer. So firstly, we have the BS. Let's kill that for right now. I have this bell pattern from Omnispear. Very low. You know what I mean? So I can bring that back to zero. Add some reverb. Back in the truck. Look a bit more to the right with it, so I go about 35%. I mean, I know we start getting more instruments in the truck, so I kind of want to start give everything a little bit of room where it can do its own thing, you know what I mean, and not clash with too much other instruments. So it's all out them four. Chucker right there, so. All right, so. This one sound right here, let me solo out this. Hold on. This is a very dynamic sound, right? It have a lot of different parts to it. It's one sound, but it have a lot of different parts to it, so. This is the first sound for me, so. Let's listen to the intro again with it by itself. Everything else mute. And remember, we have the Omnisphere upon the, the track, same way. So now we can bring in an EQ upon that and kind of shape that a little bit. We want to get a little bit more brightness out of the bell and get rid of some of the bass. Just pay attention to it on your right side of the headphones. Notice say it come up in volume, but it's not really dominant. It's just in its own space doing its own thing. So the thing for focus pan is this track from X pan where you have the like a, a drum roll, like a march, and you know I mean like some type of military thing with some strings that play some cards and all of that. That's the dominant sound. So we need for kind of, um, what I say, shape this sound properly. So you know, bring in some different EQs, and I mean, I really use the same EQ I use so far. So all right. So for whatever reason. Studio one just crashed, so I kind of do back everything. So I'm to bring back across the EQ on this channel. All right, so back to this truck. Let's bring in the EQ. All right, so the good thing about this EQ is we can boost and attenuate, meaning we can boost and reduce one frequency. And I mean, it's it's crazy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a nice boost to the low end around 100. Now 
I mean, it just it sounds so fucking good. It's crazy. But no one got so drastic with it, though, you know what I mean? We want a boost, but we're not that much. Because remember, so we have the BS for bringing in later on. Anyway, so let's just boost a little bit. I remember, we don't attenuate it anyway, so that's fine. So let's do about five and then start attenuate. And then high frequency wise, we're gonna do a boost probably around 12 or 16k. I'll start with 12 for right now and then so we can get. Without, I mean, it just sound light and flat with the EQ. It just bring up that body and just bring in some character to the thing, and we like that. And I mean, so that's good. Let's send it to the verb now. A little bit because I have a little bit of verb on it already, so we don't want too much of it. Alright, cool. We can start bringing some more of the other instruments. Alright, so what I like about this EQ is, aside from the fact that it is a good EQ, I like so I can visually change anything. So like if I want to change it on the mixer and not in the EQ itself, I can just boom, grab that and, you know what I mean? So that's one thing I'm, I'm kind of pull for this more than a lot of other EQs. Still love the Fab Filter EQs and all of that, but I'm going to use this EQ a lot in this track and that's probably the main reason because it's really easy for use and it's not too much work. For, um, like I don't have to pull up nothing. If it changes nothing, pretty much so. That's one of the main reasons why I like this EQ so much. So let's boost some of the highs upon these strings, but without darting them up <clears throat> at the same time. Alright, so <clears throat> volume wise, definitely too high. Once you start bringing the highs, I mean, it will increase the volume anyway so there's no need to have the volume as high as it was i can add some reverb Let's solo this real quick. All right, so one quick trick for fatten up any sound in your production is just let's duplicate this track. So duplicate and duplicate again. So what I'm going to do is take this track, copy it down, and then copy it down. So the one in the center is the main one, right? The ones directly to the left and right, we don't do exactly that. We don't pan directly left and directly right. Why I'm going to do that is because now we don't start fatting up the original sound. So if you listen to the original sound by itself... Sounds good, 
But if we bring in the other two with the toilet to play. It's just a way fat a sound, you know what I mean? Um, another thing I would all do is scale back the EQ on both of these channels so we can delete that and then come across with this. Remove that one. So now if we do this, we can edit. Let's get rid of this EQ too. So if we remove this. Let's drag this across. All right. Let's darken up them sound up on the outside. And then let's bring the volumes up. Uh, for whatever reason, this one now play. Oh, there's nothing on it. Where the fuck the track go? Oh, I might have made a mistake and delete it. Okay. So now if you listen to it back in at the track. Now I mean, without them it sound light and with them it just get a big body and it's just very, very present. So, I mean, let me say, exactly the sound of I go for, so. Let's unmute that. All right, let's go back to the two billa bells now. All right, reverb first. Let's lower the volume. Let's bring across the puke tech. Cool. So let's take out some of the attenuation. I want a little bit of the bass. I want a massive boost. High wise, I want a lot of attenuation. Same way. Let's widen out the bandwidth. Cool. Nice. So on to these bass lines. So you have the Amnesphere bass, which is very dominant. You know what I mean? At the grit, you know what I mean? So, and then you have the Nexus bass, which is a more laid back, pure sign bass. So merging them, pretty simple. For the Amnesphere bass, you need a simple EQ. Because I want to get rid of some of them lower frequencies anyway because this bass is more for the sound than for the body so let's turn up the next assigned bass so upon the next bass let's add head crusher one of my favorite distortion plugins and immediately, without even adjusting anything, the head crusher start work. Just get more character out of the bass. But we want more than that. So let's go fully dark with the tone. Let's do a high cut all the way down to about 800, something like that. Let's turn up the drive a little bit. Clean. Can stay for right now. Mix, we do about 75. The sound, we don't change while it's a place. So we don't see which one sound better for the track. All right, so I'm like this, the sound of this British um, tone right there. So if I'm turning on Assassinate. Yeah, Assassinate not really work for that track here. So 
we left it at that. Let's increase the driver like a bit more. All right, that's cool. So I like how the Nexus bass sound. Let's go back to the Atmosphere bass now and start bringing out the character out of it. So, so a little bit of a cut and a boost. Alright, cool. Let's add the capitator to kind of get some distortion after the EQ. We don't put the tone to dark, so we'll kind of cut out a lot of the, the character of the bass, but we don't adjust it back so we can hear it. Notice the character gone. Same thing, high cut, not as drastic. Wet knob, we we'll kind of blend it, but same 70%. And then lastly, we'll add a flanger to it from Native Instruments. It's called Flare. Or actually, I'll we'll use the Meta Flanger from Waves Stereo. So back in at the truck. So if I get more out of it, I know, I'm after I just come to the bus, slap a compressor upon it, um, or use the Slate Digital um, FGMU, I believe. Yep, so I want about 3 dB of compression. What a really kind of slow attack, but a really fast release. I'll do a little bit of a high pass. So not now get compressed until about 39 hertz. Um, and then makeup gain want about 2.9 dB as far as the gain go. Yep, and that's cool for right now because later on we don't start seeing it with the kick or with a kick or with the kicks because we have three of them. So that's good for right now. So on to the the three brother them where I do the vocals, the G City man them. So let me see if we can find them voice. Alright, so them the right so. All right. First, EQ. Do a low cut and then do a high shelf or oh, 12 dB per. Cool. Definitely send them to a reverb and then I use the slate digit not slate the CLA vocals if you add some delay to them voice we can find it right or so no at a quarter note so if you unsole it and put it back in the truck. Yeah, 
Little bit of compression on it. Alright, so now we can kind of scale back the vocals, make it fit more in our mix. So that's that for the, the vocals. Can I always change anything later on? So let's move on to the verse. Some of the elements of the verse are they start get mixed, but some other elements I'll get bring in right now. So let's go to the verse. Alright, so let's turn on the tug. We don't need that for right now. So let's move into the kicks. So I have the hi hats right there, so all right, sneers right there, so not necessary for right now. Let's start work on the kicks them. All right, so now we start get creative with the EQ. So bring the pro Q from Fab Filter. Master filter. All right. Let's bring this back down to about 20. Let's bring this down to about 200. Let's get a boost right here. Boost wide, cut small, or cut narrow. So let's unsolder this, scare across the EQ. And then do the same thing for the other one. But for this last one though, I'm gonna do, do is get a little bit of the high frequency them. I'm gonna like that little click, that little sizzle up on the top end. Kinda like that a little bit. Then what I'm gonna do is come to the bus now and then start process them a little bit more. So if I come on the bus, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in the SSL compressor from Waves, Mano. I want about 3 dB of compression. So 
switch the attack to about three milliseconds. We already get boost, so let's put this back to zero. Now, one thing we can listen for to is, is to see if this kind of, as we bring it in mono, can see if it changes any of the characteristics of the sound. So let's turn off this real quick. All right, so it seems as if, because we bring it in mono, it kind of kill out a little bit of the characteristics of the sound. So we see if we can adjust that, but. If not, then we go back to a stereo compressor. All right, so of that, let's bring in the SSL EQ. So stereo. So I look a bit of a roll off, turn on analog, and then we want like I look a bit on the top and a lot on the low end. So let's turn up the bandwidth. Let's play the track here again. Alright, cool. So it's a little bit more narrow. Let's switch the frequency. Good, like that. And let me see more, I like a bit on the top end, so it's got about 10 to 12K and boost. Mid range wise, we don't really want too much, just a like a bit. All right, like that. So without the effects, really, really good and like the sound, like the Christmas. But of course, you know, we're not gonna have it as loud as that too because we're side chain it to the, to the, um, to the bass. So to do that, let's bring in the Pro C from Fab Filter. And now is the mono version, we'll just use the regular Pro C 2016. Um, let's engage sidechain, then let's come to send, sidechain, and then look for the Pro C. Mm, so what's the BS Pro C? All right, so, so now we're gonna play. I mean the kick now fight with the bass as much well switch this to about 12 instead of 20 So now we can start bringing the snares. SSL EQ for the snare. Mono. I have a preset. It's called Snare Presence. Let's listen to the magical difference of this mic. Bright, in your face, and just crisp and nice like that. So.
So on to the ops. Copy across this, reset it. A couple of little boosts and a couple of cuts. Definitely roll off upon the low. Second up, what I'll do for that is we'll add a plugin called Stereo Savage. Or actually, we'll use the S1 from Waves and make it way simpler. Yeah. Way easier to explain. All I'm going to do is pretty much spread it out, make it wider. Um, let's increase that. Let's bring across the EQ. Um, Let's switch the curve though, more boost than cuts. Um, let's flatten out this line a little bit, kind of get like a, like a shelf. Uh, and then let's come across with the filter. Reverb a little bit more, which is nice. And then with this, we just all spread the sound. And I mean, I can hear the difference, just I make it wider. So in other track, you know what I mean? And it's not a lot of clashing and all of that type of stuff I go on. All right, so now we'll go back to the hi-hats. And yes, reverb on the hi hats, not a lot, but. And then bring an EQ. Actually, I'm not gonna use that the EQ, then we don't go for the. Some else completely. Um, let's go. Don't crack. I want the DC. Mm. Can I think of the name? Brightness. And there should be a preset in here called Hi Hat. More ear, actually. So now. It's like the hi hats just come from nowhere and just get some life. But we still love bring cross and EQ though. Reason being is one get rid of any bass frequency whatsoever. No really care about the the whole um boosting or not really boost not or just a cut. So we do everything so far up to the chorus. And I mean, tracker slowly come together. It's too loud right now, but the one good thing about this is you can highlight everything and bring down the volume. So let's go back from the top and listen all the way through to the verse. All right, so we have something that is missing already. And that will be this, so let's unmute that. Yeah. 
Yeah, so uh, we're getting to the meat of the track, which is the chorus. And it's the meat because it have a lot of stuff going on. It have sound effects, it have movie scene effects, all kind of fuck, you know what I mean? <laughs> so let's get into that. Let's loop that. And let's start work on the chorus. So let's find the instruments I need to turn down. All right, so all our synth elements can. All right, so this kind of low, so I can boost a little bit. Not a lot because it's crowded right here, so boosting that not really going to make no difference right now, you know what I mean? So let's get started. All right, one second, solo out them. Okay, so these are the gunshots. So, all we do is open one left fully, and then the other two would open right 50 and 75%. All right, and then the other one are 75. So, this is what I'm sound like. If I solo them out, I'll try them. You know I me? Mean? Um, probably can go a little bit more drastic upon the panning. So 60 and 85. And then with this one, let's go a little less drastic with the panning. Let's go 78. So in a fully left, but we mostly left. And then we need um, processing very, very similar for all three of these. So what i is just take the Pro Q and copy it across to all three of them. So now we can do a nice edit and just reset this to default. So I'm going to process like gun sounds and all them things there. I don't really try to go for bass. I don't really care for bass in a gun sound. You know what I mean? But this is a track after all. So I typically like cut a lot um, and then boost. Not necessarily with a shelf most of the time. But just for this track, I'm going to do a little bit of a shelf boost right there. So, and then I'm do a bell curve right behind it. So you notice I'm going to get a lot of the the nastiness out of the um out of the gunshot so put in a little bit more brightness and then as far as the eq go we'll do a copy it to all three of them add some reverb to it just a little bit cool Back in the truck so we can mix them in the truck. So let's turn this up. Put this man. Let's put all three of them at zero. Let's bring this back. Alright, let's bring this back. Alright. All right, so with them two, yeah, let's scale back a little bit. Let's go about 75. Because it's something. If we have the space to do it, so might as well do it. Okay, nice, 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 nice. 
All right, so as from what you can hear, you have the siren while playing at the track. I mean, and if, you, if you're not paying attention, you're not going to hear it, but it did it. You can just hear it that come up ever so slightly, just to come up, you know what I mean? So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to do some pan automation, right? I'll make it start on the left and then end up in the center. So let's right click on the C. Let's go edit automation pan. And like I said, we don't make it start on the left, but we don't make it come in. I make it start on the right and come in to the center. And if you can look on the waveform right now, you can see say, the track kind of more dominant on the right hand side already. Like the waveform already a little bit fatter on the right. So what I do is just kind of exaggerate that a little bit, not too much. So let's bring that back to the center. So one thing I'm going to slap on this really quickly is a DSR. So for that, go reverb. A solo the song. Alright, so because the truck kind of, um, I'm going to describe it as, um, I'm not even sure I'm going to describe it as, but it's a lot, I wouldn't say dynamic or whatever, whatever, da, 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 da. it's just, it's a very multi-dimensional song. It have a lot of different layers to it, you know I mean? You have the siren, you have the gunshot, you have the crowd, you have the screaming, a lot of different stuff are going um, what I want to do is more kind of control it a little bit, even more so than the EQ, because it have a lot of go on, so I want to tame certain parts side specific, you know what I mean? All right, so like right up in there, so you can see once the car crash occur, frequencies just get out of control right up in there. So what I want to know is, more kind of team that a little bit. Um, so we don't use a multiband compressor, multiband EQ um, for do that. So let's go ahead and get all of that set up. So let's set the threshold to about minus, I say minus about 12. So anything over that will start get some compression I go on on it. I want a really fast attack and a semi slow release. And I mean, range will set that to about. 2 dB or actually minus 2 dB 
You know what I mean? So I kind of team it a little bit and I'm on the fourth knob now. I'll go. See him, pretty much the same preset, minus 12. Really, really fast attack and a much slower at, um, release time. Range would all do probably about minus 2.4. So something similar. And then gain, we already take out 2, two dB out of it as far as just we that take out. Gain, just make the queue a little bit more narrow. So if we listen to it without that. Now I mean, so it's a little bit, it's much, much tamer, you know what I mean? It's much more control. It's not as aggressive and out of control as it was before the dynamic EQ. So we're good with that. Let's bring it back in at the track now and listen. I mean, so we can still take out a little bit of gain out of it. It's very low as it is, but. All right, so now we can start bringing back the leads. So this one left. 60%. Let's bring in some reverb for it. So finally, <laughs> come to a track. I'm gonna use delay pan. So let's add another effects bus and what I'll call this delay. Um, the delay I'm gonna use is the repeater from Slate Digital, of course. So let's switch this to yellow. Sorry about that. So let's bring in the repeat there from Slit Digital Favorites. Um, let's go repeater, repeater, repeater. And then one thing I'm gonna like about Studio One is it's fucking feature where I can actually see the plugin the moment I look for. So if I go so boom and click on repeat and then go update plugin thumbnail because I have it from my favorite slits. Notice me get a thumbnail right down this or so. Really, really good feature about um, Studio One. All right, so we have this instrument here. Let's turn on the verb on it, bring in an EQ on it because it's a lead, so we don't need no bass, but we need the high frequency. Another thing I'm going to bring in on it, I should have bring in before me even bring it in a studio one is a flanger so i'll go f i'll go meta flanger again just because i kind of love it kind of it's a group on me so meta flanger let's turn down the mix to 12 percent it's just it sounds so fucking good it's ridiculous uh Let's put this above the EQ and see what it sounds like. Sounds great. So now let's go to the delay. Um, let's adjust the delay itself. And so I want a quarter note delay. Let uh, me see. I must go with quarter note, but we we'll see.
All right. So let's unlink them now. Uh, let's switch this to an eight note. So because we have the bass I play, <clears throat> if you notice, the sound is kind of buried in a the in a the in a the chorus while the bass I play, but once everything drop off and it just become the siren and the gunshots, it get louder. So what I do do for kind of um, attenuate for that is, is you know automate the fader. So just edit the volume automation. No. When the chorus end right here, that's perfectly fine with them. But before that, one just get a nice, small little boost. So in the chorus, we don't have it. And if you watch the feeder, you'll notice it go up and down. So we have it like this. You know what I mean? No, it is a little bit too loud in the chorus. I'll bring it back a little bit. Little, little bit. Cool. So right at the end now we have three more gunshots or album. It's an AK-47. So right there, so right. Zoom out. We have three. I mean, so what would I do? First, for the three gunshot or album four, let's bring in the same reverb. And after the effects, let's bring in the same delay. So now. I mean, so let's start left 50. Let's go center and then let's go right 50. Nice, really, really nice. Let's bring across the same EQ, which just adds brightness and a little bit of contrast. Now let's use the volume to determine the sound space. All right, so let's switch this around. So let's go left 25. Let's go R25. And let's adjust the reverb on all of them. And then the volume on all of them. 
So now, because we have all of this on a bus, of course. So, output effects. So if we go over to the effects bus, can kind of control what I go on with a simple compressor. So, if we got Personas, compressor. And just tame down everything. Nice, so tame that. Quickly, really, really quickly. All right, so let's go back to the verse. Let's bring up the strings. All right, one song it's from Zampla. So let's bring cross EQ, I mean reverb, delay. So everything's sounding really, really good. So let's take a final listen through the whole track. Um, I think I have mixed every aspect of this track. Um, I doubt there's a track that's not um, mixed yet. So let's... Ah, so we have one right there. So it's just a uh, gunshot C4. All right, so let's add some verb to it. Um, leave the delay as it is. Let's bring in EQ. So procure it. That's what I need to look for. And drag it in. Um, let's go small boost. Another small boost. And a roll off. Okay, perfect. Um, it's just nothing. Kind of fine tune the, um, the volume. So where is it? All right, that's so. Huh? Hold on. I know it is. Ah, it is. What blood clot EQ? Re oh, I wonder what the fuck the EQ look like at the reset. So I just to bring down the volume a little bit. Just give some more reverb though. And the delay, not a lot. Okay, so that sounds good. So let's just go through and see if we miss any other tracks. We might need some type of um, mix. Alright, that's mixed. That's mixed too. 
Um, so yeah, just want to see if we miss anything or anything like that. I know my producer tag not getting no processing, but that's fine. That's not nothing for worry about right now. Just I try see if we miss anything else. But I doubt it. And if anything, we can always I got you on double check anyway. So just needed to see if any type of nothing get mess up or whatever. So let's listen to the track from the beginning. So let's play. All right. So I'm going to try to get everything on the screen. And the mixer upon the screen. So let's sharpen up the mixer. So I'll just feel of them and play through everything. So everything is sounding good to me so far. And I mean, well, I'll go through double check and all of that and, you know, probably fine tune something just have to mix in my producer tag and that's pretty much it, you know what I mean? So until next time, it's your boy SB is the truck star and the questions, leave them down below. But then, till then, peace.